Dear natural ladies, I'm trying to let my size grow for a new style. In the meantime, don't miss the message word about my hair. I promise you my edges are fine. Hello, hello. I am Bridget. I am energy. I am powerful and I am who I say I am. The purpose of this video is to talk about suicide. I want to talk about suicide because nobody else don't talk about it. And we in physical reality should be making peace with the totality, should be accepting the totality of God. Because to live is to die, okay? And somewhere in between, some people think about death in a suicidal way. And what happens in the physical reality is that nobody talks about it. Nobody don't want to talk about committing suicide. Nobody don't want to tell nobody else that, hey, I had that thought once before and, and I moved past that thought. I allowed that energy to flow through me instead of just hitting me and staying within me and growing within me until one day I decided to kill myself. And, you know, my, my wife didn't know, my children didn't know, and, you know, because I suppressed it. Next thing you know, we, in the physical reality, see your neighbor on the news saying, oh, she was a, a great person, really friendly. I never knew he'd kill himself in the entire neighborhood, you know. <laughs> and I'm the only one still alive, you know. <laughs> and and the, the crazy, well, I don't want to say crazy. Excuse that, that, that choice of word. The interesting thing about it is that everybody has had the thought, but nobody talks about it. So the interesting thing is that it's normal. But the person that is experiencing the suicidal thought thinks that they're different and begin to feel isolated, you know, and, and begin to have this anxiety and begin to feed into it so much. So it becomes like this hidden entity inside of them and it grows into this big monster that they can't contain. And so there's nothing left to do but to destroy itself. Mm hmm because these monsters that we, 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 we hold on and harbor within, they become greater. Because we're the ones that are supposed to be de dealing with them. We're the ones that are supposed to put them back in order because we're the ones that created them in the beginning. So the reason why I was prompted to, to make this particular video is because the other day, well, prior to the other day, when I would go in one of my boy's room, he'd always have the computer on and there'll be this man on the screen, screen, a game str streamer. And this streamer, you know, he'd always be talking on the screen. You could see on his, on my son's computer screen, you could always see this picture of this white man talking every time you open his room. And you'll see on the screen all of these people commenting while this man is talking and playing the game or whatever. He had like thousands and thousands of, um, excuse me, sorry about that. Let me turn my volume off. Thousands of, um, people looking at him, you know, watching him play this particular game. And so in watching him play this game, you would think that this streamer was really, really popular, you know, was happy-go-lucky, was just, you know, in his right mind. And so... I would often tell my son, who is this man? Why every time I come up here, this man talking? Can he see me? Because I don't want him to see me. He's like, Mom, no, I can see him. And we all can see him playing and we're commenting. But he can't see up here. I'm like, oh, okay. So I go up and add a man always on the screen. And so the other day, my son told me, he's like, hey, Mom, remember him? I was like, yeah, it's that man that's always up in your room talking when you leave the computer on. And I always have to shut him up. <laughs> he said, he committed suicide. And I was like, really? Wow. I wish he would have talked to somebody about that. I wish he would have better understood that because everybody had that thought. But because nobody talked about that thought, they, they begin to isolate themselves from, you know, from that, from everybody else and begin to isolate themselves and don't tell nobody. And begin to think that there's something is wrong with them. Why do I hate myself so much? They don't want to go in. Remember that movie, that movie Bird Box? And that lady, they had the lady, Sandra Bullock. 
in the movie. It's, it's almost like I'm saying all of this because this is what's going on with Corona. You know, a lot of people losing their job. A lot of people at home stuck with the husband and wife, you know. A lot of people, um, financial issues, you know, and depression and anxiety because now they have all of this downtime and they never, never, never went in. Never used none of that downtime to go in. Don't know what going in is. Afraid to go in. Afraid to simply close their eyes and realize this nothingness is really them instead of this here that they see. This is really the totality of them, this nothingness. But this nothingness, when I close my eyes, for them, they created a monster in it. But back to the movie with Sandra Bullock. In the movie, they had to be blindfolded. Bird box. They had to be blindfolded. And so when they were blindfolded, they had to go in here. Because see, in here, this is where you meet God. In here, you meet God or you meet your monsters. You meet whatever it is that you have created. <laughs> and you got to deal with it. And so in this particular movie, Fair Box, they have this like entity, this dark energy, this carbon, this, this melanin, this universe, this universal energy that was monsters to, to people and begin to make people react because they had to face the biggest fear that they created. And we had, had the people react in certain ways. They had the one lady in the movie, she, she was happy in one scene and the next scene she beat her head against the glass trying to commit suicide. Hmm. Another scene, somebody jumping off of a cliff and running into flames of fire because it's like their biggest fear magnified this is what's happening right now in the physical reality during the corona your greatest fear that you gotta face because now that what you thought was real <laughs> it's been taken away from a lot of people see 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 everybody think this here this here is real but what's really real is this here <laughs> This darkness, this nothingness, this is real. This here is what I created in my simulated reality, my virtual reality right here. This is what I created. But this here, here, this right here, what I see, this nothingness, this is really just me. <laughs> this is really all that exists. This is the totality of God, this nothingness. It's darkness. But see, a lot of people, when they go to sleep and they close their eyes, they're not even familiar with this darkness. They have nightmares in this darkness. They are afraid of the dark in this darkness. <laughs> they're afraid to meditate in this darkness. They gotta hurry up and get up out of that meditation because they don't want to deal with those entities or that energy that's inside of them that they see, that they've created. And so suicidal thoughts is just that, something that you created. But the, here's, the, here's the key. You have to make peace in the darkness. You have to make peace in the darkness. And see, that's the thing with me and my journey. And I talk to you all about making peace in the darkness many times in my videos. Even for example, I, I'll tell on myself, if it's going to help somebody in their journey, I'll tell on myself. When I was younger, you know how I wrote in my book about how, you know, I had little uh, daddy issues and stuff, and stuff like that. That was my moment when I wondered, why, why am I here? I had that thought. I had that thought of wanting to die. You know what? My dad's not here. I must not be a good child, you know. I just, just had that thought. I never acted on the thought, but I had the thought. And so I feel like that was a pivotal moment in my in my journey because I allowed, I, I embraced that thought, and I let that thought flow through me and not stay in me. And so when 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 further along in my journey, there was another moment when I got really, really sick when, when I wasn't eating healthy and and I was weak in my body and I felt like I was going to die. Now, this is not a suicidal thought, but because I dealt with a suicidal thought when I felt like death was upon me, and because I let that suicidal thought flow through me when I had the thought of, of the moment of dying, 
I got to a moment, I wrote about this in my book, where it was so hard for me to breathe. And I felt like my body was just kind of like zapping out. And so I made peace with death. And I said, let your will be done to live as to die. I would intentionally tell my children, look, take care of your brother. Look out for your brother. I love you. You know, going to bed, well, I would say that every night. And so I was at a place in my journey where I was making peace with death. <laughs> See, a lot of people, when, when you say make peace with death, so to speak, they'll think, oh no, because death is going to come. No, you have to make peace with the totality of God. Because God is not just life. God is death too. You have to embrace to live is to die, is what I'm saying here. Because the fear that you would have on dying will make death come to you faster because fear is energy. Fear, you can create through fear. You see? And so, I've made peace with that so-called death till I got to a point where it's like, I would wake up and I just have like one eye open and like I had to make so much peace with the thought of death because I understood to live was to die and it was going to come. Because I would wake up in the morning with one eye crack like I'd be dirt. Now where is death exit? <laughs> I thought for sure I was going to die the last night, you know. I thought it was coming. I mean, I was weak. I don't know how I made it home. Wait, let me talk, let me put this in the blood pressure. I don't know how I made it home to see another day. Myself, the uh, laptop was about to die. But you mean to tell me death ain't here? Where is death? And so I had made peace with it so much that so I was like, well, tomorrow I'm going to get up from here and I'm going to try to eat something healthy. Maybe I'll try that. I ain't tried nothing else. Death didn't come last night. <laughs> So each day I would try, this is how I got on my health uh, journey. Each day I would try something new. I would try something green and nasty. Green and nasty. And I remember it like it was yesterday. My baby boy told me, he's like, Ma, what are you doing to us? All I want is some nuggets. Why we got to eat this? Give me some nuggets, please, Mama. <laughs> because that was the lifestyle that we had prior to eating healthy. It was just fast food, you know, and that's all they knew. And I was taking that seemingly from them, right? But anyway, I embraced death in that moment. And embracing death in that moment, it was like a, I created a paradigm shift. You see? Instead of being fearful of it and constantly going to the doctor and getting more medication, I, I got to a point where I told the doctor, you know what, look, I ain't about to continue to be your lab rat up in here. Mm -mm, I ain't doing it. I'm not, I'm not taking that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's just like, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> Said, I don't know that part yet, but I'm going to figure it out. And so I made peace with those thoughts of death. And in making peace with it, <laughs> it opened up a new life for me. And so the, the purpose here is me saying those suicidal thoughts come for everybody. If you are somebody that has experienced them in this physical reality, don't isolate yourself. Don't think you have normal. Other people have it too. They just not admitting it. And so that day when my son was telling me that, you know, the guy had committed suicide, I was like, yeah, because, you know, when I was younger, you know, I had that thought before, and I, that was a perfect opportunity that I was able to talk to him and, and be like, you, you ever thought like that? He's like, yeah, but, yeah, you know, when I was a little younger, yeah, me too, you know? And so you're able to have that open dialogue with somebody else, and then it, that's a pivotal moment right there, just having that open dialogue with somebody that you could trust. You know, you don't want to do it with none of those social media fake it till you make it type friends. Because they're going to act like their life is just so perfect, you know. And then they're going to call somebody like, girl, you know, you know she ain't saying that she ain't wanted to die. Like, they never have a thought, you know. 
So you want to do this to somebody, with somebody that you can be open and transparent with. And then you'll better understand like, oh, okay. You had the thought? I did too. Oh, she had the thought too. So, okay, I'm not abnormal. I'm not too different because seemingly in human nature, we, we, we all seemingly want to be a part of something. You know, that's just, that's just human nature. People want to be part of something. That's, that's why I feel like, you know, like, 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 um, church, like believing in God, you know, everybody flocks to being a part of that, you know, corporate America, they want to be a part of that, be a team player, even with sports. I want to be part of, I want to be part of the saints or the cowboys, you know, I want to be a fan of theirs because I want to be a part of something. I want to be long. Now, that's what our human nature quality, one of the million, you want to belong to something. You want to feel that you're a part of something. And so when you feel suicidal thoughts, you feel like, oh, I'm abnormal. Until you talk to other people and realize that they even feel them thoughts too. And all we have to do is let them thoughts flow. And in and, and, and letting them flow, you'll find joy in life you'll find meaning or passion in life and realize that when those thoughts come back again you get stronger and then you're overcoming the thought and then you don't think the thought anymore and then you turn around and you master the thought and you can say just like it says in the biblical text oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory because now you've mastered it. You've mastered it mentally. So I wanted to just share that with you all about suicidal thoughts. Because I know that during this downtime, a lot of people have been experiencing, experiencing it. And not just experience suicidal thoughts, but anxiety, even with maybe partners and relationships, you know. Because, like, it's, it's different now for people, you know, with, um, you know, they have partners that one of them stayed home all the time and now the other one you know the husband is now working from home and so they're together all the time and so even divorce rates are going to be on the rise and that's more anxiety that that's the shake up in your physical reality that you're not used to because we have so much downtime it can help us go through that struggle that some of us have been dealing with the struggle of the ability to love and the ability to connect because we have people even in relationships that are married as couples that have not connected and so right now during this particular downtime when maybe one of the partners who used to go to work is now working from home and so they're button heads all day these people who never had the ability to connect already are button heads and now they don't want to connect now they want to be divorced everybody is going through a struggle at this particular moment and their struggle might be the fact that they're always present with that person that they never really connected to they thought they were connected to that person because the person maybe had to work offshore <laughs> maybe stayed at work all day and all night but when you are around that person 24 7 and you're not used to it and you might have a struggle with connecting to that particular person and so that is the same aspect of the situation with Sandra Bullock in that movie Bird Box she was finding it hard to connect to herself and the people around her she stayed in a house she didn't want to do nothing to herself she was pregnant and, and seemingly the person that knocked her up left her. She had children that she wouldn't connect to. She named them boy and girl. She was pushing seemingly people away from her. But at the tail end of the movie, the movie, the presence of this dark energy that was present, it was really designed. It was really designed for her to learn how to deal with that struggle and reconnect. So at the end of the movie, then she gave children their names. And at the end of the movie, she was able to open up that heart chakra and to love and connect to herself. 
But she had to close her eyes in order to get there. She had to deal with herself in order to get there and deal with her fears in order to get there. You see what I'm saying? It's no different right now in the situation with Corona. We just got a mask on our on our on our mouth and nose. Bird Box was having a mask on their eyes. But either way, whether we're talking about Bird Box or Corona right now, one thing is for sure. That dark energy that we all stem from is the only place that we're gonna be able to go to reconnect to ourselves and reconnect to the people around us. It's the only place. Because that's the place where you meet God at. That's the place where you meet God at. And for those of you who have thought about suicidal thoughts, I want to encourage you to make peace and let that thought flow and enjoy life and know that to live is to die but choose to do living in its totality because death is gonna come choose life today from my heart to yours baby be blessed